Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Now here along with Dr. Bonatti, your host, Kimberly Brumell. Well, thank you for joining us for American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our radio executive producer and friend, Ethan Euchre. Here as always. Our friend and senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Good morning. How are you? Great to be here. (laughs) (laughs) And that man across from me is world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti of the Benatti Spine Institute. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Thank you. (laughs) Well, every week, you know, I have so many things that go through my mind when I have to describe Dr. Benatti and the Benatti Spine Institute because, you know... Imitation is the biggest form of flattery, but when it comes to your spine, cheap imitations just don't quite match up to the real thing, and that man over there is the real thing. And what I mean by that is that is a doctor that went through the rigorous training of spine surgery, just like everybody else, and he trained for traditional spine surgery of the neck and back, and he saw the problems that it left people with, and he didn't like that. So instead of leaving blinders on and continuing along that path, he set out to develop his own methods and instrumentation that actually brought true relief of pain. Mm -hmm. Pretty much pinpoint accuracy to eradicate the pain that patients feel. And their patented exclusive methods that the Benatti Spine Institute and Dr. Benatti provide, but nobody else is able to do. And don't be uh, like fooled by keywords like just minimally invasive and laser because laser by itself uh uh-uh, not going to do anything for you but lasers along with pinpoint accurate methods and the knowledge and the experience and ingenuity of that man right there and the surgeons that he's trained at the Benatti Spine Institute, those are the things that are going to bring you long-lasting relief, helping you regain your strength and get back in motion. Now, over the last seven to eight years, we've talked with the patients, we've always talked with the patients, but we've drilled down on that over 94% patient satisfaction, and it's at (laughs) 98.75%. We thought 94 was awesome. Exactly. (laughs) And then when we really got down to it, it's even better than that. Exactly. And, you know, you see some people jump on the bandwagon to try to mix numbers and blur issues. We've actually heard from patients that other places, when they call to find the Bonatti Spine Institute, if they accidentally contacted a different place, the place actually pretends to be Bonatti in an effort to get them through the door. That's uh-uh. ridiculous. Bad practice. <laughs> so shady. But we constantly <laughs> fix those people's patients. So um, with that said, that's why we always say Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Uh, with that said, we have a really exciting program mm-hmm. on. Uh, we have Dr. Lloyd Miller, Associate Professor of Dermatology at Johns Hopkins, and he's going to be on about a revolutionary procedure that's to diagnose infection. It's called Vivo Optical Imaging. This thing is amazing. It's super complicated. Jeff and I were just talking about that, <laughs> reading over the prep. Uh-huh. But it's, I mean, if, if he can break it down in layman's terms, right. Dr. Miller, it's pretty amazing what the potential is for this technology. When we yes. get into that segment, if Ethan and I are real quiet, <laughs> it's because we're kind of intimidated because it's so high tech. So we might have to let Dr. Bonatti take we're over here like, <laughs> Well, reading over the show prep, I had to read it quite a few times just to keep things straight. Oh, yeah. And then we have Dr. Pat, is it Basu? Basu, yeah. Basu. Uh, doctors on demand, telemedicine, what a need we have for that. So we have him on to discuss the benefits. And I might ask him some things because, you know, it's a skeptic in me you know does this telemedicine thing really work we'll find out Mm -hmm. and then of course we'll hear what's new in american medicine today but up first in today's back to life segment we will talk to a patient of the bonati spine institute who went from living a life that was restricted by pain and discomfort through their journey of finding the Bonatti Spine Institute and are now living pain-free. Well, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Andrew Kashmir from Clearwater, Florida. Thanks for being on the line and and sharing your story with us today. How are you doing, Andrew? Good to, good to have you on the show. <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, why don't you go ahead and tell how you came to be in pain? Because from what I understand, you were a fairly active uh, gentleman who suffered with not only back and neck pain, but for decades. So why don't you start there? Well, I was an athlete, and I was training for the Olympics and ended up getting injured with my knee. And over the years, it's just taken its toll 
from doing all the sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lived with the pain for the last uh, 30, 40 years, plus the numbness Ooh. in my arm. Andrew, what uh, you said you were training for the Olympics. What sport and for uh, for what games, if I can uh, ask? Gymnastics 72. Wow. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And so did did you compete in the Olympics? Did you make the no, team? No, because I end up having to have knee surgery oh. on my 21st birthday, oh, which brutal. was the year before. So oh. I didn't get to have my dream. Wow. Andrew, it sounds like you suffered for quite a while. Was there an mm. uh, injury or something happened that made you kind of decide, mm. hey, I need to find some relief? No, you know, it was just a complication from the, all the tumbling in the sports, but over the years it just got worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went through periods of numbness in my arm and that pinch of the sciatic nerve, mm-hmm. but I really didn't have the knowledge of everything that was happening then. And so, obviously, this was affecting your, your day-to-day mm-hmm. life. How long, uh, well, you already said you suffered with this for many, many, mm-hmm. many years. What sort of uh, treatments did you uh, did you seek out? In, in well, I guess the best one was me for my hot tub, jacuzzi. But mm-hmm. I did do okay. uh, acupuncture and massage, mm-hmm. which, you know, between the three, I managed just to move the years on. Let me ask you, when you were in that sort of pain and for so long, how was that limiting your daily activities? What were some well, of the things that you weren't able to do? It limited a lot of things that I wanted to do the time I had to take off. Most of the time what I would spend in the hot tub, even wake up during the night, two or three nights going to the hot tub, taking as hot as baths as I can. So. Right. How would uh, obviously it was affecting your sleeping? What about walking? And you mentioned kind of a numbness down your arm. Did yeah, it affect in, in, into my leg when it pinched the nerve there? But, the sciatic. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I got to a point where I couldn't even walk a half a block Ooh. without the pain. Oh my goodness! What how, what did your life become because you were really active, and then you had this onset of pain that was with you for so many decades? What did your life end up being like? Can you kind of walk us um, quickly through a day? I ended up quite being not doing anything. Yeah. You know, if I wanted to do something, I had to get a wheelchair. They had to push me around in the mall or oh do gosh. things. Or ended up going to the hot tub or taking hot baths. Okay. Wow. With, with that being said, what was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back? What well, was the thing that, that made you start to seek out treatment? Well, in the last year we had kind of moved, and I overdid it and mm-hmm. irritated it to the point where I couldn't function. So, and I didn't have insurance, okay. couldn't afford it mm-hmm. to get something done about it. So, right. I met my wife, married her, and she has insurance, and that was the beginning of it. Okay. Um, did you seek out other doctors before finding the Bonatti Spine Institute? Yes, I. I in fact. About 10 years ago, I checked out one on my neck, and he suggested to fuse two or three of the vertebrae together in the neck, Mm -hmm. and I would have to turn my shoulders to look, and I just asked him a simple question. I said, would it fix the problem? He said, no. So I said, why would I want to go through the surgery? So so that fusion would eliminate your ability to, you would have no range of motion then? Yeah. Um, Very little. Yeah, I would have had none. Because I would have had to turn Your whole my shoulders to look because there would have been three vertebrae fused. Can yeah. you imagine? That's, that's, a, that's a horrible option. So obviously you didn't want to go with that. Right. How did you yeah, find so a... I lived with that for the last 15 years or so. And wow. Then, so how did you find out about uh, the Bonatti Spine Institute? Well, I went to a couple of doctors here about my knee because I thought it was my knee. And it turned out that the x-rays and MRI showed that I had spinal stenosis and checked with a couple of doctors who wanted to do the, the cut, and put mm-hmm. the bone in. And I just had to find different options. So right. I went to a couple of different places, even a couple other <clears throat> lasers, but Bonatti's was the only one that took the time to go through the whole thing when I went to visit them and show me the x-rays. Okay. And they were able to answer your questions, so obviously you felt confident in your choice. Yes, they answered the questions. The doctor came in and uh, he showed me the x-rays, explained mm-hmm. everything, and 
since I was in sports, I kind of knew a lot of it, and right. it made sense. And ever since, <laughs> now I'm walking, and well, pain free, <laughs> not free in my arm. Well, you're you're jumping ahead. The okay. you knew that there was going to be conscious IV sedation. So, did you understand why it was important to be interactive with the doctor? Yes, so they could understand what was going on within me, and right. I could communicate with them. Exactly. If you're out cold, there's no way that the mm-hmm. doctor can communicate back and forth with you to make sure that they're right at the root of the pain. Mm-hmm. So that's right. why it's it's so important. When did you first start to feel relief of the pain that brought you there? Well, when I had the first surgery, I woke up in recovery. Mm-hmm. It was instant. Instant? So. Yeah. Wow. It's about as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah. And so after 40, what was it, 40 years of, of pain to just finally really re- recover your life, especially yeah. in the recovery room like that, that must have been incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you remember interacting with the doctors during your surgery, correct? Yes. See, so you were awake for that. And I have to preface this because some people are afraid um, when they're asleep or some are afraid to be awake. But you're relatively pain-free and you're interacting with the doctor so they can pinpoint the root of your problem. Now, sometimes it does make people sleepy, so sometimes they rest and then they wake up in recovery. So I just want to clarify. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you said it was relatively quick, um, you feeling pain relief. After 40-some years of living in tremendous pain, how are you feeling now? Well, I'm pain-free. I just finished Mm -hmm. my last surgery Mm -hmm. because there was complications with the vertebra in two different areas. Mm -hmm. So they really don't want to do the surgery. They leave it up to the patient. Right. And I explained what I was going through, and we did the surgeries. And now I'm finishing up this my first week after the surgery. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm walking again, no pain, no problem. Glad to hear you're feeling well. That's fantastic. And hopefully if you ran into someone that was suffering like you did for so many years, would you feel okay with talking about the Benati Spine Institute? Oh, definitely. In fact, I already have talked to some people that have asked me. So. Excellent. Fantastic. All right, Andrew. Well, uh, continued pain-free living, and we appreciate you joining us on American Medicine Today, sir. All right. Thank you. You You take care, Andrew. Okay. Thank you. Good stuff. See, these stories never get old. It doesn't matter um, how many years people have been suffering with pain. The Benati spine procedures are the way to eradicate yourself of that continued problem. Well, coming up after the break, we have Dr. Lloyd Miller going to talk to us about a new way to diagnose infection. Make sure you stay tuned. You're listening to American Medicine Today. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. The Bonatti Spine Institute is proud to announce more than a 94% patient reported success rate in over 45,000 patent protected spine surgical procedures. Call us today at 855-267-0483 or visit us at bonatti.com. All my pain is gone, gone, gone. Today I am totally pain free, nothing, no after effect. I'm pain-free, and I have had to take any pain medication. Today I am pain-free for the first time in over a year, and it is so awesome. I only wish I'd known about it earlier. Right now, I am completely without pain. Sitting here in this office right now, pain-free, eager to enjoy the rest of my life. I am feeling great. I feel 100% better like a new person. Today I feel absolutely fantastic. It's just incredible the relief I feel right now. Today I'm completely pain free. During the procedure I literally felt the pain melt away. It was fantastic. I feel so, so good. It took care of my headaches instantly. It's incredible. It's really incredible. It gave me my life back. It's just wonderful. I feel fantastic. 
It is just absolutely amazing. So I'm hoping to be climbing hills in a few weeks. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thanks for listening to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, alongside our radio executive producer, Ethan Euchre. Glad to be here. Senior fellow and junior mint, Jeff Wagstaff. <laughs> It's great to be here. That's a new one. <laughs> and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. It's almost good to be here. Well, uh. we're excited because <laughs> we have Dr. Lloyd Miller, and he's associate professor of the Department of Dermatology at Johns Hopkins. And he's here to discuss a technology called Vivo Optical Imaging, which is revolutionizing the way that we diagnose infection. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Miller. Uh, it's my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Now, Dr. Miller, um, reading some of this stuff, mm -hmm. Jeff and I especially... We're flat, <laughs> blown away by what you're doing. We're a little boggled. Um, and some of the statistics in yes. the article I read, it said that infection is the cause of a quarter of the deaths in the mm -hmm. world, really. Yeah. And much of the reason is because it's difficult to isolate um, sort of the pathology of the infection. Can you explain right. why that is and what in vivo does? Um... Yeah, infection is an enormous problem, and I think, you know, if you look at infection as a whole, as like bacterial infections and viral infections across the world, um, these have been going on for, uh, since the beginning, you know, of, of, uh, of time. And really, infection is, is a really become a major problem, has been highlighted even by uh, the president's statement um, this past year that all these antimicrobial resistant organisms are being. Uh, are now out there. Um, okay. It's spreading through the population. So now we have uh, bacterial bugs that are extremely difficult to uh, eradicate with current antibiotic therapy. And so rapid diagnosis and uh, treatment is really necessary, and the right treatment uh, is necessary to really combat antimicrobial resistant pathogens. Mm -hmm. What are bacterial, what is bacterial colonization? Because you mentioned that a lot in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was reading through this. So and basically, I mean, there's a lot of bacteria. That, so normally the skin is colonized with normal bacterial, commensal bacteria, which are healthy, and they protect the skin and, um, from, and our mucosa and even our entire lung and gut. They're all colonized with normal, commensal, normal, healthy bacteria that prevent pathogens from uh, taking hold and causing an infection. Okay. And what, what you're concerned about is when a pathogen, something that causes an infection, can can either breach the barrier and fight off the commensal bacteria and cause an infection, or colonize, actually um, replicate, and that usually occurs in where bacteria can get access to a lot of nutrients, such as in a chronic wound where there's a good blood supply to the wound. Um, pathogenic bacteria can replicate, and you end up with mm -hmm. a lot of commensal bacteria in a wound. Um, bacteria can also seed any type of um, any type of device, implant, um, uh, line, uh, catheter that enters the body, and bacteria like to seed on those foreign surfaces because there's no blood supply, there's nothing really to, uh, there's no way antibiotics can get there, and the immune system cannot get to these foreign bodies. So bacteria colonize um, these foreign bodies as well, oh. and there are real problems with like pacemaker infections or, or mm. orthopedic prosthetic joint infections, um, they like to seed the implants. But in the skin, you're really concerned about, like, wound, the amount of bacteria in the wound, and that amount of colonization has okay. become problematic and inhibit wound healing. So with 
in vivo optical imaging, what you try to do is you put out um, what's called nanoprobes, and then they implement either bioluminescent or or fluorescence to basically highlight those <laughs> uh, diseased <laughs> areas. <laughs> am I am I correct? Wow. In that? Yeah, so right now when you look at a wound, um, it's sometimes difficult to tell how much bacteria is colonized on there, which type of bacteria, and really the extent of the colonization and infection. Um, in, in, in preclinical, in, in animal models, we, we use bioluminescent bacteria that, that naturally emit light, and we can detect that and actually know how much bacteria are going on in a wound, and this is used um, as a research tool. In the clinic, it's becoming very exciting because there's all these new, um, there's nanoprobes, but there's other, um, other types of probes and tracers that are tagged with usually a fluorescent molecule where you can shine light in, and if something, if the tracer is specific for a particular bacterium, it'll light up, and it will give off a signal of light that then can be, t- be detected um, by, by um, a probe. And once you detect the, the fluorescence, you can know uh, the amount of bacteria and which bacteria is, is in a wound, for instance. And so what are some of the applications for this, and how far, like, are you still in testing? Any success, uh, stories of success that you've seen in treating certain uh, specific causes of infection? So right now, most things that I know about are preclinical. Um, there are several imaging platforms that have been really the, the cancer field has kind of been leading this effort because they have all these traces against certain types of cancers. And most of this work is done um, during the time of surgery where the, the patient, um, where you're operating and you need to know what is diseased cancer tissue and what is healthy tissue. And if you use a tracer specific for the cancer, the surgeon can then cut out the cancer and leave as much healthy tissue behind. Similarly, the, that same type of technology can be done in the operating room where they can use the same types of fluorescent tracers and probes and, and nanoprobes even um, to detect where an infection is. And then the surgeon, we, we, surgeons typically debride or, or try and get rid of as much of the infection possible surgically, and then, then you can optimize antibiotic therapy afterwards. So I think that probably the, the first application would be an image-guided uh, surgical application to debride wounds or debris infected tissues in the operating room. So, Dr. Miller, what you are really saying is uh, that this is a diagnostic tool that can be used by the practitioners in the clinic uh, and, uh, and by the surgeons to identify the area. But in my own practice, what I found is uh, uh, if you just dilute the, the, the bacteria or the infected area, with the, an irrigation, daily irrigation, um, we, we, we can practically debris the, the area of the bacteria so we can use these probes to see how the amount of infection is, is coming down and is progressing. And that is practically what you are telling us that you develop. Yeah, I think that's exactly correct. So you can first diagnose the type of bacteria and the amount, and then you can also um, have a non-invasive measure of how it's responding to either a surgical therapy and antibiotic therapy, and you know if you're cutting down that bacteria. And I, I think it's very exciting, and maybe in your practice even, they're, they're coming out with these handheld uh, devices that can detect the fluorescent signals. So I think soon, as soon as the technology progresses, the machines will get smaller and will be much more easier to use even on an outpatient setting where you can get real feedback right, um, right, at the be- you know, right there in the, uh, in the patient room as an outpatient, not just in the operating room. Well, yeah, because right now uh, our knowledge of the, of the infection is really guessing, um, but when you have these probes, will really give you a measure of this, uh, the, 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 that the treatment is really working or not. We'll certainly keep an yeah, eye on it. Yeah, I think that's a really important mm-hmm. point, and it's really good mm-hmm. to get some really good follow-up because you're right, you're guessing. You don't know if you've made a real difference in, in clearing the infection with the breedmen or, or the antibiotics are working. So this would be a, a great way to um, follow the, 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 the clearance or, or even the progression of an infection and know, know what you're doing is working. Oh, well, Dr. Miller, a lot of interesting discussion here. Thank you for joining us on the program, Associate Professor of the Department of Dermatology at Johns Hopkins in regards to in vivo optical imaging. Thanks for joining us, sir.
Okay, it's my pleasure and a uh, very exciting field and I'm, I'm happy to have been part of the discussion. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day. Coming up after the break, we have Dr. Pat Basu, former Stanford physician and White House fellow, now chief medical officer of Doctor on Demand to discuss telemedicine. Make sure you stay tuned. You're listening to American Medicine Today. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. The Bonatti Spine Institute is proud to announce more than a 94% patient reported success rate in over 45,000 patent protected spine surgical procedures. Call us today at 855-267-0483 or visit us at bonatti.com. All my pain is gone, gone, gone. Today I am totally pain free, nothing, no after effect. I'm pain-free, and I have had to take any pain medication. Today I am pain-free for the first time in over a year, and it is so awesome. I only wish I'd known about it earlier. Right now, I am completely without pain. Sitting here in this office right now, pain-free, eager to enjoy the rest of my life. I am feeling great. I feel 100% better like a new person. Today I feel absolutely fantastic. It's just incredible the relief I feel right now. Today I'm completely pain free. Now, during the procedure I literally felt the pain melt away. It was fantastic. I feel so, so good. It took care of my headaches instantly. It's incredible. It's really incredible. It gave me my life back. It's just wonderful. I feel fantastic. It is just absolutely amazing. So I'm hoping to be climbing hills in a few weeks. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Now here along with Dr. Bonatti, your host, Kimberly Brumell. You're listening to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our radio executive producer and the glassless Ethan Euchre. Yep, got my yeah. LASIK done. Mm -hmm. I'm still adjusting to it. I, I still know. I reach up to to have like the to adjust my <laughs> phantom glasses that aren't there anymore. Exactly. It's weird, but it's uh, yeah. Thanks to Dr. Sibley at the Florida yeah. Eye Center for yeah. that, by the way. Looking good, kiddo. Thank you. All right, Whoa. and then we have senior fellow Jeff Wagstaff. Well, I guess that beats Junior, man. <laughs> it's so good to be here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then world-renowned orthopedic surgeon Dr. Alfred Benatti of the Benatti Spine Institute. Who is Junior Man? Yeah, this guy over here. We call him Senior Fellow, and then you said you're Senior Fellow, so, so then we call junior. him Junior Man. Now he's Junior Man. Junior Man. <laughs> At least I have but, a title. Okay. Well, they to, demote you. Well, to be <laughs> serious, um, we have somebody great on the line, yes, we do. and we're yeah. here with Dr. Pat Basu. Right? Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Basu. Okay. Basu, sorry. Uh, former Stanford physician and White House fellow, now the chief medical officer of Doctor on Demand. And he's here to discuss the booming telemedicine industry. So thank you for joining us, Doctor. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Yeah. You know, when I first heard about uh, telemedicine, it reminded me almost of something on the Jetsons. You know, it's very sort of futuristic, but it's starting uh -huh. to take off where you can sit in the comfort of your own home 
and basically get diagnosed by Correct. a physician somewhere in the country. Is that pretty much, in a nutshell, how it works, Dr. Basu? That is pretty much how it works. So, so you know, Doctor on Demand, that you know, the mm-hmm. service that I uh, that I run is a service that allows a patient anywhere in the country to instantly video connect with one of our board certified physicians. Mm-hmm. Uh, those doctors can diagnose, treat, and prescribe medication. Uh, you can use an, an iPhone. You can use a tablet. You can use a computer. And and yeah, you know, uh, in one way, it is sort of like the Jetsons. On the other hand. Uh, I'm sure you know Dr. Bonatti could could agree with this. We do a lot of incredible things in medicine, from organ transplants to incredible devices. Mm-hmm. So half half of me says, "Hey, you know, video connecting with your doctor is actually not that futuristic. <laughs> it's it's almost sort of anticlimactic <laughs> in a certain sense. Yeah. But at the same time, so. uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, we we've taken care of you know thousands and and in fact millions of patients and. And the reaction we get from from our patients is sort of the Jetsons because they they say, "Wow, I can't believe this actually works. This is amazing." So, um, well, not, a little bit of half and half, but it's a terrific service. But I, not on, not only that, but you shorten the wait time. They were saying here the average wait time to see a physician can be three weeks, and when you're suffering in pain or you have a cold or something like that, three weeks is way too long. Mm-hmm. So this is pretty much instantaneous. You know, this is this is a great it, it idea. Really, it really is. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is a great idea, Doc. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. Well, One of the things that I, I, I think with this, uh, with this uh, program, is we can reach physicians and, uh, and and start to 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 create some sort of a knowledge uh, to the company that you run, because it's not only uh, I do something with my own patients. Um, when a patient was a new patient, I always give a phone call and I talk to this patient because I want to be sure that this patient is going to come to me with a clear knowledge of what I am going to do and how I am going to do it and what results that person may have. So what you are offering is an incredible tool for the physicians and surgeons uh, in general for for an approach to to. To have a conversation, a quiet conversation with the patient to get the best results and the best knowledge. People come to your clinic and or to your office, or wherever you are, and they, they don't know what to expect. And they are not really clear, what are you going to do? With this other system, they are going to know exactly, they already know you, they already talk to you. It's an incredible tool, doctor. I am extremely impressed with your idea. Well, well, thank you so much. And, and uh, you know, the, the Doctor on Demand service is great because about 95% of our consultations, so 19 out of 20, are, are basically, you know, fully resolved, fully treated, you know, at the time of consultation. But the remaining 5%, we are able to direct them, guide them, give them a referral. So, and, and to your earlier point about the, the unacceptable 21-day wait, you know, I've I've seen it as a clinician. I've seen it in my time uh, in Washington, you know, helping shape policy. It is just unacceptable. And if a woman has a urinary tract infection, mm-hmm. she should not have to wait, you know, three weeks, let alone one week to see a doctor. If a, if a child has a rash mm-hmm. or, you know, somebody has pink eye, the fact that we make people drive, wait in a waiting room, uh, you know, wait all this time to, to deal with that is, is frankly unacceptable. And I think we will look back mm-hmm. 10 years from now and we'll say we used to have these things called waiting rooms <laughs> where we put a bunch of healthy people in a room with some sick people exactly. <laughs> and had them sit and there for they all ended up sick and, then, and hope yeah, for the best exactly. <laughs> let me yeah, let and then, you know we came, they came in and saw me for you know for 10 minutes and i i did this so you know the, the cases that we treat are primarily you know upper respiratory infection which is like sinusitis bronchitis uh certainly urinary tract infection we have a lot of mothers and a lot of fathers who call us for their children Children might have fever. They may have a rash. Uh, they may just have gotten a, a bump and a bruise from playing with with older brother. And the bottom line is, we're able to help them right there on the spot from the comfort and convenience of their home. Mm-hmm. And in most of the cases, our doctors are able to say, "Hey, you know, no need to worry about it." Or I'm going to e-prescribe a medication to you. But in the cases where we have to send them in, you're basically bypassing that first step, anyways. Because a lot right. of times, let's take an adult example. Let's say you came to me. Mm-hmm. in a regular office and, and you had upper abdominal pain that you might have needed labs or maybe an ultrasound for, well, we're going to need to refer you out anyways to get that done. And you're just taking care of that over over a simple video connection. And, and you're right, the average wait time for us is about two minutes. 
mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's it's terrific. I, I went into medicine as did you know the doctors in the studio, as did most doctors to help patients, and getting to see that patient satisfaction is is by far my favorite part of the job. You know, I have to ask, because normally when you hear of something this innovative, it's not covered by insurance. Is your uh, telemedicine doctor on demand covered by insurance companies? Yeah, that's a great question. So doctor on demand is covered. Uh, so the, the maximum cost of a doctor on demand visit is $40. That's uh, so that's in contrast to, you mm-hmm. know, upwards of 100 for a doctor's visit or, or much more for an urgent care, let alone an ER. So that's if if somebody were to just pay out of pocket right now, it's forty dollars. Now, and, uh, through a variety of insurance plans, now it is covered and increasingly so. We have about twenty five million Americans now wow. who have doctor on demand at a lower price, uh, either through insurance or directly through their employer okay. as a health benefit. In some cases, they get it for ten or twenty or thirty. But the max is always forty, and uh, and it works with most insurance plans. Yep, that's great. And how, how is the law now to communicate from interstate? Because I understood before uh, I I I was trying to do some teleconference with my patients in the past, but but mm-hmm. uh, there were laws that they didn't allow us to do the mm-hmm. communication one state to the other one. Is that changed now? No, that's, a, that's another terrific question. So what will happen is, um, you know, let's say patients are, are residing in Florida and they, they use the iPhone or an iPad or a computer. Uh, we'll know their GPS location. It'll connect them with a Florida doctor. Got now it. let's say they travel to Chicago uh, for a conference or for a trip and they get a sinus infection. They'll then get connected to an, one of our Illinois doctors. But since they're all a part of the same practice, we can access their records from Florida, wherever. But to answer your question okay. specifically, they'll get connected with a licensed board-certified doctor in the state in which they're calling from. And that's um, that's why we have 1,400 physicians around the country who um, who have qualified to, to take care of these, these uh, patients. Dr. Besser, you said that they're all members of the same practice, which leads to a question. Are these primary care physicians who have their own practices and do this type of a consultation as a part-time basis? Are all these doctors full-time in your practice? Yeah, so um, we we run and operate a practice uh, essentially in, in every state in the country, and the doctors are either full-time, meaning they're working five, you know, sh- eight-hour shifts or 40 hours a week with us, or part-time, which means they work about three eight-hour shifts, about 24 hours with us. In most of the cases, they also tend to be faculty members at a university. Uh, you know, a lot of my colleagues from Stanford University uh, in California are, are a part of our California practice. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them choose to still maintain their, their own practices. So it's either they're doing this half and half or they're doing this full time. Um, they go through a very long vetting process. It takes, uh, you know, several months for us to review their credentials. We have about We've had almost 12,000 physicians apply, um, and we've selected, like I said, about 10% of those based on board certification, credentials, how they interview, and uh, and most of them are doing this at least half the week, and as our volume has really, really picked up, the demand is has skyrocketed. We've moved many of them to full time. Here's what. Here's a, here's a question for from the doctor standpoint. Mm-hmm. I could understand from a patient standpoint why it would be so much more convenient, but right. how do the doctors benefit from it, and do they like this doctor on demand? Yeah, yeah, the doctors love it, and that's both our internal doctors who are you know who have qualified for doctor on demand, or even the external community. And and there's a few reasons. The first that we hear from our doctors is, and it, this all this all <laughs> this was sort of a surprise to me, but it makes sense. Is they came they came to me and they said, well, Pat, the, the thing I love most about this is I get to focus on patient care. Mm. In when I work for doctor on demand, 57 minutes out of 60 minutes is spent on diagnosing and treating patients, which is why I went into medicine, whereas in my clinic, and studies actually will show this, roughly eight to nine minutes out of every hour in our practices, our brick-and-mortar practices, are actually spent on treating patients. Mm -hmm. Much more is spent on forms and running around and and getting charts or or entering data. Um, So that's one reason that was sort of a surprise Mm -hmm. to me. The the reason that, that is not a surprise to me is that the flexibility is tremendous. So most American workers have been able to work from home Mm-hmm. They've been able to travel or move with their spouses or or get work done even when they're when they're on travel. This allows physicians to finally be able to do that. So if you're moving from Florida to Texas mm-hmm. or you're vacationing mm-hmm. in California, you can still work. 
Um, and then the third thing is, uh, you know, the, the pay. You're getting to work from, from home, uh, flexibility, and the pay is, uh, is, is right on target or even a little bit higher than what most primary care doctors ah. make. Perfect. Well, there's doctor, no and there's no overhead. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. Dr. Basu, sorry to cut you off, but we're coming up on a break. A uh, former Stanford physician and White House fellow, now the chief medical officer of Doctor on Demand. Thanks for discussing telemedicine and the industry. Um, thanks for being Appreciate part of the it. program. Thanks for having me. Have a great day, guys. Take you care. too. Take Thank care. Thank you. Very interesting stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, coming up after the break, you're going to hear what's new in American medicine today, slash a little bit of Barack's crock. Make sure you stay tuned. You're listening to American Medicine Today. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. The Bonatti Spine Institute is proud to announce more than a 94% patient reported success rate in over 45,000 patent protected spine surgical procedures. Call us today at 855-267-0483 or visit us at bonatti.com. All my pain is gone, gone, gone. Today I am totally pain free, nothing, no after effect. I'm pain-free, and I have had to take any pain medication. Today I am pain-free for the first time in over a year, and it is so awesome. I only wish I'd known about it earlier. Right now, I am completely without pain. Sitting here in this office right now, pain-free, eager to enjoy the rest of my life. I am feeling great. I feel 100% better like a new person. Today I feel absolutely fantastic. It's just incredible the relief I feel right now. Today I'm completely pain free. During the procedure I literally felt the pain melt away. It was fantastic. I feel so, so good. It took care of my headaches instantly. It's incredible. It's really incredible. It gave me my life back. It's just wonderful. I feel fantastic. It is just absolutely amazing. So I'm hoping to be climbing hills in a few weeks. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Well, you're continuing to listen to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our radio executive producer, Ethan Euchre. Glad to be here. Senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Thanks for having me. (laughs) And world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. Hi. There we go. <laughs> and we ready? Sounder? All right, let's go. Ba-doom. Let's look at what's new in medicine today, featuring Alfred Benatti, MD. It's all you, sir. Well, I I'm going to diverge a little bit from medicine today. Okay. I am so happy, so happy to see that we have a real, a real American oh. on the rostrum for the next presidential uh, debate and next presidential run. 
And who are we speaking of? Oh, I'm talking the about Donald. the fantastic Donald Trump. Ah. <laughs> now, let me tell you this. This country, for first time, is, is railing behind a real man. Mm -hmm. Not only ethical, strong, intelligent, and at the same time, who's not scared to say the truth. Mm -hmm. It's about time and how refreshing it is to see somebody who has real, real knowledge of what is necessary in this country mm -hmm. to change this country to what this country really is. It's uh, like somebody throw a cover over all the citizens and a bunch of wimps, irresponsible, mediocre, unintelligent individuals are running mm -hmm. the country. Mm. True. And, and it's amazing to see the answers that they have to the questions of this man. And the answers are so wimpy and so incredible poor that anybody, even the idiots, are going to go, oh, that's not true. Well, they backtrack. The thing that I found amazing is even if they made comments that were somewhat similar to Donald Trump, they backtrack pedal and they try to make apologies he was just on Hannity last night and Hannity even said you know seeing the backlash from the things you've said would you take it back and he pretty much said no he's always I mean, like that, he doesn't he doesn't yeah. say no. no he just look at these people and say he just said I'm telling you the truth yeah okay well, because the mediocrity always tried to justify well it's not even so much that they're just idiots dr. Benati the <laughs> you know which, which is well, not a term that I really yeah. And I'm advocate and, and, but <laughs> but he was saying stick to the truth the fact of the matter is the country itself was sending their criminals mm -hmm. and it's been proven the statistics are it's, there it's just, to back it, it just, up it just common sense what he said mm -hmm. he said why they are going to put the criminals and all this garbage that they send to the united states in their jails when we can pay for that and Correct. and and it's so it's so impressive to see how the right. media covers now this murder yes. and is on the gonna, news that's what I was is we're mention. spending <laughs> millions mm -hmm. of dollars to treat this right. I, they should put him right now on the plane, send mm -hmm. him to the country, yeah. and let them do whatever they need to do there. Five times. Five times deported. Yeah, for those that don't he know what we're talking about, the, up in San Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, again, like Kimberly said, he was deported five times, kicked out of this country, mm -hmm. but San Francisco is one of these sanctuary cities mm -hmm. where it comes down to the state level and they don't want to interfere with the feds, and this it's so complicated that... This because, sort of things because, happen. The Be feds actually <coughs> actually jumped in and were trying to do the right thing and deport the guy five times. Instead, he finds his way back in, mm -hmm. and he murders this girl, shoots her in the back while she's with her father. Claims he was trying to shoot sea, li sea right. lions, is what he said. And he found right. the gun wrapped in a t-shirt. Yeah, but said. wasn't wasn't it a federal <laughs> agent's gun? I hadn't heard that part. I you know, it, think it, that was the newest was a, revelation. Well, let's, 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 let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Why? Trump is so fantastic. <laughs> Back to Trump. Okay. It's not only it's a new approach to mm -hmm. the reality of the political arena. Mm -hmm. It's getting the politicians to start to talk a little bit about the truth. Right. Okay. It's putting look, uh, this new about about the illegals, mm -hmm. we're talking in this program about the illegals several times. The problem is is nobody listen because it's so much so much uh, corrupted on the system mm -hmm. that before everybody goes and says that is right is correct but the problem is nothing we can do about mm -hmm. this man has the power to say we're going to do it mm -hmm. and he already create this this resonance all over the country about right. the illegals and mm -hmm. today the illegals are not really welcome on this country think to this man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is what we need we need somebody who get the politicians out we need term New limits. Mm -hmm. So if you create a law, you live with that law. If you create a job, you have an opportunity to create another one. Right. Now, let's, let's talk about something so simple. You're criticizing the police. You are attacking the police. And you are, and the president is, is racing to talk about the abuse of a criminal. And he's allowing the criminal to be a hero. Right. This is, to me, chaos. 
is a chaos. These men create a chaos in this country, in everything, mm -hmm. not only in medicine, in politics, in social mm -hmm. gathering. And now the police is scared, really, to, to act do their job. and to mm -hmm. do their job. Mm -hmm. If Correct. you give the police a, 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 a badge and yes. you give a gun, you right. need to live with that. Right. Because that is your responsibility to give to that police and make that that policeman is properly trained. Correct. But you cannot go ahead and get the police poorly trained, give them a gun and a badge, and then complain about. Well, and then <laughs> tell them they can't use it. Then you're tying their hands behind their back, and yep. they'll be darned if they see anything going on. They're just going to walk well, right on by. I have friends that, uh, you know, being from New York, I have friends that are on the NYPD. And when mm -hmm. all of that craziness was going on, they told me, they said, we feel like we can't go out and do our job because no matter what we do, it's going to be the wrong thing, and it's going to be criticized, and we don't have the public support. Be no, it's not the problem. Not, it's, not, it's not the public. The public is with the police. Mm -hmm. The problem is you have a small group and the president railing against mm -hmm. the police. Well, you have Sharpton. Okay, Sharpton and then you have you have you have you organizers have certain parts yes. of the public. These, these people, are when the you police. organize something like that, mm -hmm. correct? They should rail him totally, put him in jail, and then and and then be sure mm -hmm. that these people are not creating this chaos. Yeah. We have an anarchic state in United States today, mm -hmm. and this is this is horrendous. Okay, it's, it's something that <laughs> look, I am I am I am really concerned to leave the country mm -hmm. and go to visit the world mm -hmm. because the whole world is in chaos everywhere okay mm -hmm. and it's in chaos think to this guy mm -hmm. this guy this stabilized the, the the middle east and now <laughs> we are going to spend millions of dollars to be able to control this chaos in the world mm -hmm. And that's a look at what's new in medicine today with Alfred Benatti, MD. I guarantee you. To tie we, that in, <laughs> go ahead. Donald Trump also wants to totally get rid of Obamacare. Yay. And that's part of American medicine today. Mm -hmm. um, with time, that guys. said, <laughs> make sure you check us out on Bloomberg both Saturdays and Sundays and locally, WFTS ABC 28 at 7 p.m. on Saturdays. Well, that about wraps it up. We'll see you next time. Enjoy. You're <laughs> watching and listening to American Medicine today. Bye-bye.